thank you, firstly, to uh, Adrian and Russ and Andrew for inviting me to join um, the European Adphone Media Summit. As Adrian says, I've been here most years and presented here before. I think it's a fantastic event that's put on uh, each year and all the coming together of everybody. So I'm absolutely delighted to be here. Um, since founding Diversify Media a couple of years ago, I've worked with clients across the UK, Europe and the Middle East. Um, so it's really worth noting that the data and the information that I'm going to share with you today is very much from my personal experiences, my clients' experiences, data that is sent to me by some of the big groups, and also information in the public domain. Um, as you know, when we talk about figures and percentages, there's always a bit of give on uh, what's co collected and what's put out, so just to bear that in mind. So we're gonna talk about uh, Europe specifically. Uh, the European markets differ hugely from legislation, their digital in infrastructure and investment, the backroom functionalities, which is something that's really kind of trying to keep pace and, and catch up what, with what's going on with investment. But there is one commonality across all of it, that for out of home, specifically digital and classic, there is room for growth, both in revenue terms and in overall share. So we are in a quite a positive place. So. This morning, um, I'm going to really look at both mature markets and emerging markets, the influences which impact out of home, and that's an overarching influence, the overall out of home landscape, and as Adrian just mentioned, that's changed quite a lot and can change really quickly, as we've certainly seen in the UK. So um, I'm going to show you a little bit about that and then have a look at the overall digital developments of what's going in in that market, which is very key to what's happened this week and, and as Adrian said, the um, presentations that took place yesterday. Within each of those segments, um, we'll look at some identifying some opportunities for growth and where inventory and markets are changing. So, uh, this morning is, uh, is quite heavy on stats and a few graphs, so get comfortable. I'll make it as easy as possible. So, uh, let's have a look. So, first of all, we really need to set the scene. The global ad market, so just to put it all into perspective, the global ad market was valued at just over $600 billion. This is all 2008. And that was up 4% year on year, so 4% on 2017. The out-of-home market, globally, was just shy of $37 billion. That also was up 4% on the previous year. And globally, the share was approximately 6, 6.5%. So that's where we ended 2008. This was split. We're just going to have a very quick look at the uh, global regions. This was split between North America, coming in uh, at 226 billion. Then we go to Asia Pacific at 211 billion. Um, and you have Western Europe at 108 and Central and Eastern Europe coming in um, at just over 16 billion. What we're looking at here is also share. So share is a measure in out of home that's really key to us and really is our gauge point of how the industry is doing. And what you can see here is that in actual fact, the real share driving has been in the Middle East and North Africa. Um, but, and we'll talk about that very briefly. Um, and then in Asia Pacific, which is certainly a market that is growing and is ripe for more development. But today we're really going to talk about um, Europe. So we'll flick on to show you where. Now, I don't expect you all to read that, um, but it does give an indication of where that volume in Europe really sits. And we're going to have a look at those markets independently. So the overall European ad market was 123 billion. That also, by coincident, was up 4%. Out of home share of that of just Europe was just over $8 billion. That was up 5%. And again, we seem to constantly hold that 6, 6.5% share of the total European ad spend. So that seems to be a, a commonality. The forecasts for the next couple of years um, across global out-of-home growth is looking at about 4% consecutively. So that's 2019 and 2020. And that's very much in line with 
global ad spend. So out of home is tracking the same as global out of spend, uh, uh, global overall. However, Europe at the moment is forecasted for only one and a half percent. So there are certainly some uh, some work to be done there, and that's going on for the next couple of years. But again, we seem to always stick with that six percent of overall share. Now, I'm not going to unpick um, Brexit and the influence of Brexit. Adrian has already talked about it. But I don't think I've read or looked at a report across Europe that doesn't talk about it and talk about it in, as an influencing factor to what's happening in the market. I think we're all very aware that when there is instability, that has a knock-on effect to all industries um, and forecasts for uh, for ad spend in general over the last couple of years in the EU markets have been revised several times. So um, I'm not really going to go down that route. But what is interesting is outside of Europe, as I've mentioned, the real growth markets at the moment appear to be Asia Pacific and Latin America. But as I say, let's really have a look at, at Europe and, I'll, and we'll bring those figures to the forefront. I appreciate the revenues here aren't necessarily sitting in the right location, but I think you're going to get the gist, not geography lesson, obviously. And naturally, a percentage growth is relative to the number and to the market. So do bear that in mind um, as well. What's really interesting here, as well as the larger markets that we talk about a lot, and we will talk about those, which are big blocks in red, it's actually the growth of other markets that's really starting to come through, and therefore those emerging markets, and what are the opportunities that we really can identify there. Having a look and just taking a little run through of this, um, we have the UK, all of this is in dollars, the UK here just um, over $1.4 billion dollars. Um, and that's the growth of about 1.52% 1, 1 growth we've seen year on year. And as I say, it's at 6% share. Um, second to that, we have France, just literally shy of the UK at 1.4 as well, with 2% growth. Then we go to Germany, Switzerland and Italy, with uh, Belgium and Spain coming in behind. But what is interesting is when we look, for example, at Sweden. So Sweden we have here with 12% growth. Now, accepting that it's coming from a smaller base, so Sweden overall is at $231 million, but still with 12% growth. And that really strengthens their position um, in the out-of-home market, and they are experiencing you know, a, a quite extended periods where their inventory is completely sold out. We're going to have a look at the reasons behind that in just a minute. Going further into Central and East Europe, if we look at Hungary, Hungary saw a growth of 26% year on year. They've actually seen double digit and in the 20s for the last couple of years. Um, however, this may be short lived. We have new legislations, which I'm going to mention in a minute, which will affect that. But on the flip side, there are additional opportunities in maybe small formats, which we'll come on to. Denmark is another interesting market. Um, that's seen growth of 10%. And that's uh, two things, really. That's a, a quite a favourable economic climate in Denmark, but also they've seen quite significant digital um, investment there. So if we go in a bit more the, and just talk about Western Europe, we're going to split into Western Europe and then Central and Eastern Europe. In Western Europe, the top five, seven... Um, out of home markets, they've remained st fairly static for quite some years um, and more or less in the same order. So what we've seen is we've seen the uh, UK, France, Germany, Switzerland and Italy in a ranking of total ad revenues. Belgium is quickly uh, gaining ground on Italy. So that's starting to move the dial. And thereafter, Sweden has actually swapped place with the Netherlands, and then you've got Austria coming in at 10th place. That's in total out-of-home revenues. However, as I mentioned before, our real uh, measure of out-of-home is its performance against total ad revenues. So we always look at share. How is our share doing? There aren't many, many of these, so don't worry. Um, when we look at overall share, what we've got here is we've got total out-of-home revenues, sorry, total um, ad revenues and where the share comes in. So uh, collectively, 
we're fairly constant, but what I'll do is I'm just going to pick out a couple of markets and just give a slight explanation behind those as well. If we look at the top ranking for share, we look at Portugal. So Portugal has approximately 13.5% share out of home against total ad revenue. And that's not driven by digital, which is driven in many markets, um, because digital in, in uh, Portugal hasn't taken real hold yet. It's, it's making an entrance, but it's not, it's not taken hold. But this is driven very much by Portugal um, out of home being in the top three of the media channels with TV and online. So they're quite a closed market, but it's not a digital uh, out of home driven uh, share. Then we look at France. France is at 10.5% uh, of out of home of total ad revenue. This is reversed and this is very much driven by digital out of home investment. Um, and the forecasts here are expecting to be another 3% at the end of this year. Switzerland, which will come up quite a few times. Switzerland here has uh, 10%, where are you, Switzerland, there we are, 10% uh, of, of share, and that's been driven by acquisition. So the share there is uh, Tail Media bought a majority interest of uh, Neo Advertising. Many of you will probably know this and more than I. And Neo has quite a strong presence in French-speaking um, Switzerland, and they've really challenged the duopoly between Clear Channel and uh, APG. But they also have a strong presence in uh, the German-speaking part of Switzerland. And they have new digital networks that are really coming in, bringing more inventory and driving additional ad revenue. So we have three separate areas there of... Uh, share driven by classic, share driven by digital, and share driven by acquisition. So they are our top three, which is quite interesting. I will mention UK. Uh, so UK has settled at 6% share for quite some years. And it may be me, but it feels like we challenge it every year to kind of move that dial forward. Um, but it still always settles. Though we have seen growth of between 4 and 5% uh, year on year. So uh, sorry, uh, two percent, one and a half, two percent year on year. So again, we've got to we've got to do that. At a conference um, a couple of weeks ago, which some of you were also at, uh, Jean Charles put out the challenge that we must overall really drive out of home against total ad spend. So so that's an area we've got to focus on. Looking at uh, where the growth is in uh, Western Europe, everything changes completely. So. The markets that are really, um, we understand the impact of growth are actually the smaller markets. So where if you get to a point of tolerance where it, you know, and saturation, there are other areas which are really coming through now. And those particularly are Norway, Sweden and Switzerland. And they're really leading the growth between 7 and 5% that's expected in the next 18 months, really, at the end of 2020. Um, and we're going to have a look at those implications in just a minute. But it is quite interesting where those markets are falling. UK and Ireland are still in there. Ireland is about is forecasting about 5% growth. So again, another key market. Um, but Norway, Switzerland, Sweden, Norway and Switzerland rather are the, the key drivers there. If we look at Central and uh, Eastern Europe, Russia remains very much at the top of that top of that list, with $750 million um, in their out-of-home. But do bear in mind their land mass, so you've got to put that into proportion. But the real significant growth in Russia is they are investing heavily in digital out-of-home, but it is very located by either regions or key cities. So it's not on a broad uh, spectrum. Second to that is Poland. So Poland is a really interesting market at the moment, not only from its favourable economic situation, um, but regarding out of home, it's second in that ranking, coming in at $139 million. However, do bear in mind, number one and number two, number two is 20% of revenues against, against Russia. So you've, you've got to take that into account. But they're also making really significant developments in their trading platforms. So AMS, Strower, and Clear Channel are really moving already into a very audience-based uh, model, which is a real step change. So that's quite interesting as well. 
Then we look um, at Hungary and Turkey, which are kind of jostling for third and fourth place. And then we move to um, Czech Republic. Hungary and the Czech Republic, their out-of-home uh, future in large format is very uncertain with new legislations, as I say, which I will come back to. So they have some real opportunities on smaller formats, maybe interiors, transit. So there is going to be swings and roundabouts there. There's no... Um, sorry, let me just move that one forward. And then, yeah, Czech Republic there. When we look at the um, share... Very, very different picture. You're talking about smaller numbers, but it is all relative. Um, what we have here is we have Bulgaria actually coming in at the top of that, uh, sorry, Estonia coming in at 14%, um, with an overall of $140 million. And this is driven by their digital program, which they're working on. And JC Deco have actually more recently launched um, a new digital package there called, I believe it's pronounced Digital Talian. Somebody may correct me. Um, so Estonia is doing well, and then it comes in with Bulgaria, which has been running at between 12 and 13% share for many, many years. So that's quite an interesting area as well. When we look at growth in these regions, in my view, there's not a huge projection of big growth. It's more about stability. Um, but certainly Poland is really at the top of that list. Then we look at uh, Czech Republic, if, if, if we can look at new format and, Russia and Hungary, and then uh, Russia is projected to be, to, to be stable. Turkey is also another interesting market that is making some movement, but overall it's more about standardization for this particular market, which is where they need to kind of consolidate um, and bring things to the fore to really invigorate the market there. Uh, now, I'll have a pause so you can all digest where we are. Overall, we are seeing a really healthy picture in out of home. Most markets have seen growth in 2018. There are across both Western Europe and South uh, and Eastern Europe, there are only three markets that saw a very marginal decline over 2008, and that was Austria and Norway, which I'll explain, and Germany. Going forward for 2019 and 20, it's only one market is struggling, which is Germany, but that's driven by the economic climate. Um, so overall, we're in a good place. Everything is moving forward. Um, so just to digest that a little, I think what will be a nice idea is let's see some of the great campaigns that are being broadcast across all of those markets. good very impressive um, where we're going to move on to now is we're going to look at some uh, legislation and regulations um, and naturally with all industries the economic climate which we talk about a lot uh, really impacts investment and progress out of home is no different to that and where we see a strong uh, GDP or PMI we see healthy ad spend forecasts, so they do go hand in hand. Now, I'm not an economist, so I'm not going to try and run through the state of the nations. That would be ridiculous. Um, but there are other influences that come into play regarding uh, out of home and the investment and progress. And that's really what we're going to have a look at. So, 
Many external influences really obstruct out of home. Um, and when we look across Europe, there are multiple conflicting areas. There's different legislations, different regulations, different media balance across all the different media, different numbers of channels, different advancements. So we need to put a little bit of that into perspective. Key thing is there's very little reporting, which makes it even harder. So I've picked out just a few that we're going to run through that I believe impact out of home quite significantly. But on the flip side, they also create new potentials. And that's what we really need to work with. So both Norway and Sweden, I've mentioned quite a lot, um, they've, their out of home has really been impacted by a very prob problematic TV advertising market. In 2019, some of you may know this, but in 2000, sorry, 2017, Norway TV completely sold out. So advertisers were forced to find a different, different alternative channels. As a result of that, Out of Home enjoyed a really buoyant year. It was up 17% at the end of 2017. TV then raised its prices. TV then, uh, sorry, advertisers still needed to find an alternative. Some went back, some didn't. Out of Home held almost that revenue. It dropped marginally. But then in 2019, where advertisers had moved away, TV significantly dropped their rate car prices again. So the game for out of home there is whether they can hold on to those new budgets and new advertisers. So it really has destabilized that market. And when you're doing advertising trends, we need to understand what other media are doing as well. When we look at Sweden, Sweden is quite similar. TV sold out in Sweden. Advertisers looked for alternative channels. However, independently of that, Sweden's out-of-home market is really buoyant, and they've experienced their own sold-out inventory extended periods. So that's driven very much by um, quite a heavy investment in digital out-of-home, but also their increases were as a result of quite a messy TV market. And that, but that's meant to, or forecast to stabilise for the next couple of years. So as I say, as well as developing our own markets, it is understanding other media platforms um, and how they impact, influencing budgetary distributions, bringing new brands and budgets into out of home. But as I say, the skill is to keep them. I mentioned earlier um, the Czech Republic and Hungary and their out of home sector, and they, they're going through quite some significant changes there. The Czech Republic has passed a new law to prohibit large format on highways. So all existing sites have got to be removed. Now that completely changes their out of home market. In Hungary, the government have done exactly the same. They are prohibiting large formats on highways and most of that will disappear by 2020. In addition to that, there's a potential new tax being imposed on media vendors by the a local um, municipalities, and that's being passed to clients, which means that out-of-home rates are moving up. So when that's done on a local basis and not a, a, a legal requirement, then you start to get into discretionaries, so it becomes quite a minefield. In my view, this opens up new opportunities for smaller formats, malls, transit. In Czech Republic, we have the Prague underground contract, which is coming up for tender very recently. So again, new areas that people can develop there. So that's quite interesting, I think. It's actually also interesting that the key Czech mall has actually just launched their own mall TV station. So is that a recognition of a changing uh, landscape? In uh, Central and Eastern Europe, there's been a massive cleanup of unauthorized sites, which is really good in out of home, because they do kind of ping up overnight, but there is a real screening out and removal of unauthorized sites. So that should give more control, assess platforms for accountability, and may give more credence to the overall out of home market. Uh, in Netherlands, two of the key media owners in the Netherlands, which is uh, RTL and Stera, both TV, radio, uh, and video on demand, they've abolished the 15% agency commission structure, which is a first as far as I'm aware. Um, I'm not aware of any other contractors following suit, but it may be the start of a new model going forward. But on the flip side, 
there is an opportunity there for media owners to create their own uh, customer client relationships when that would be book direct. Um, and then in Poland, we've seen many advertisers also go direct. And that's not just about digital, that's all media. So clients are buying all media direct. So again, is that an opportunity for long-term partnerships? So to really make commitments. We've seen quite a significant change in the categories which are allowed to be advertised now. Um, and that's driven by attitude changes. It's driven by health awareness. Uh, in February this year, TFL, uh, Transport for London, their ban on high fat sugar and salt uh, came into play. And this includes sugary drinks, burgers, chocolates, salted nuts even. But it's not as straightforward as that because then you get to another layer of anything that's connected with that. So anything butter, jam, etc., sandwiches. You, you're, I'm not sure about that one actually. Um, that then becomes excluded. Uh, so it's quite a complex issue. Last week it was in the uh, New York, but New York banned alcohol across any city properties. Uh, that's already in place with many states, but certainly Philadelphia, Los Angeles, uh, and San Francisco, I believe. And that's driven by health awareness, but there's an awful lot of lobbying that's now going on. Lithuania is another, another place, ban on alcohol totally from any form. That's in an effort to stem quite a heavy drinking culture, plus they have a ban on financial institutes and products. So you've got quite a lot of legislation, regulations, none of them are consistent, and it's quite a minefield to keep yourself on top of all of that. Another key driving factor when you're looking at trends is elections. Out of home market is really impacted by elections. It is the mandatory channel in most markets when an election is coming on. So, for the, it's not for the reasons you would expect with Out of Home of its delivery. So, if you're to communicate a manifesto pledge to the masses, it's an ideal property. This year alone, in 2019, there will be across Europe, there'll be 11 parliamentary elections. The following year, there's nine. So, acknowledging Elections in countries take place between four and six years. That's the norm. Between 2018 and 2020, there'll be 28 elections that will take place. So when you look at out of home and you look at trends and you look at revenues, when you see there's a surge in revenue, you really need to go back and have a look at the election schedule because that really distorts your figures going forward. It is quite a key, a key point. I do a lot of analysis across Europe for my clients and it's kind of a go-to to, to just double check what that implication has been. A real sign of disparity in mature mar for, ma for market maturity and identifying that is a comprehensive audience measurement model. It's a foundation, as we know, for planning, for trading, and proportion attribution, but it is missing in an awful lot of markets now. In the UK, you know we have Root. In uh, Italy, we have Audi Poster, and so on. I'm not going to try and pronounce the Netherlands. If anyone wants to have a go at that, fill yourself up. I don't know how you say that. But many of the uh, Eastern Europeans and less mature markets, there is no, uh, no audience measurement. It's very much reliant on media owner and their own uh, estimates and their own methodology. But even in those markets that do have an audit measurement scheme, there's an awful lot that's missed. So some will miss transit, some will miss malls, and it goes on. And again, you're very reliant on media vendor estimates. Emerging markets really have yet to come together and create their own joint industry committee and adopt the audience measurement standardization, which needs to happen first. And that will really help drive out of home share and investment. As I say, I work with quite a lot of clients who are really keen to invest in emerging markets, in digital out of home, classic out of home, but the reporting system and the lack of it is really frustrating and you get such mixed data and very often that is incredibly conflicting. So it's a minefield when you need to pick through it. So that lack of out of home accountability hinders out of home investment. The systems are struggling to keep up with, dig with uh, digital investment. I think we had that very much in the UK in our early days, um, but it will come. 
these markets will come together. I think mature markets can help lead that. And of course, mergers and acquisitions will also help us bring that to the fore, which helps move me on slightly. So now just having a look at mergers and acquisitions and what that really means. Um, the UK has seen a significant change in a really short space of time. This time last year, JC Deco had significant share, 35%, way ahead of everybody else. And within, I think it was September, October, things changed really dramatically. So Global came into the market in September, bought uh, Prime Site and Outdoor Plus. That changed everything. And then a couple of months, I think it was actually five, six weeks later, they then bought Exterium, which was confirmed last week. So that's really changed the playing field. So if you look at uh, April 2018, 35% for JC Deco, Exterium 22, Clear Channel 18, you've now got a complete change. So you've got Global and uh, JC Deco really at level pegging now with Clear Channel and Ocean coming in at the behind. That doesn't mean it's going to stay there. There is still more opportunity for change. Um, but that's quite, it just shows how quickly it can move. If we have a look across Europe, I'm not going to forecast where those movements are. But what it does show you, it shows you where the duopolies are. So if you look at Germany, you've got a, a real duopoly there. Um, but there is opportunity in other markets really for that to start to move. So it's really not unfair to assume that if we took that next year, it probably isn't going to look like this. There is ripe opportunity in multi-operator markets for those to come together. Um, but movement hasn't stopped there. In recent weeks, Adrian kind of mentioned it a little while ago, um, we've seen more movement. In the media vendor side, we've seen Ocean Buy uh, engage and Interbest in the Netherlands. Digital operators, very complementary to what Ocean do in the UK. Um, so that's really moving that forward. Adrian mentioned Broadside, AIDA and Campsite. So that's moved as well. Um, I know many of you are here today, which is lovely. And for me, quite interestingly, um, Netflix buying panels. I know it was in Sunset Strip. I get the point it's in Hollywood and streaming, that, that kind of works. But we have seen such um, an accelerated use for tech companies and streaming services using out of home, both classic and uh, digital. Is, are we going to see in the, new fu in the future them entering the market as well? So um, that's quite an interesting one, having seen Netflix um, buy into Regency in, in the States. They did only buy 35 panels, but it is an entry point. So before we move on to digital, I'll breathe, you can digest, and let's have a look at a few more other really good campaigns. When you look at those things, you just think this is just brilliant, really good, doing so well. So now we're going to move into the final section and just and really look at digitalization as a driver. So 
Whilst digital is very much driving uh, investment and share and revenue growth in the UK, this is not the case across all of Europe. Um, so it's worth stating that we're not going to be seeing the end of classic. So static is still very much an important part. What's happening is the balance between classic and digital is changing. In more mature markets, we're seeing an uplift. In other markets, digital has yet to get hold. But it's worth noting that that's uh, still in the play. Where we have dominant players or duopolies, there's less digital investment. Um, for example, Germany and Spain, there's less digital penetration. You have a duopoly there. But that's an opportunity to really open up the market for more um, progressive and disruptive players. And we are seeing that come through. This week, there's been an awful lot of conversation about automation and programmatic. Um, and I'm not going to try and get too close into that because you discussed it yesterday. But it does bring out of home really into real time. And understandably, following the levels of investment um, that has gone into digital out of home, operators need to see return. They need to see return. They need to unlock new budgets. So the development of new DSPs and SSPs really should, in theory, open that door. Uh, and this is going to, we're going to see more and more of that development, I believe, over the next six to 12 months. But there is still that need for everybody to come together. We talk about it a lot when we all get together about consolidation and collaboration. And I think that's still an area that, that we really need to drive. In uh, established markets, media vendors and specialists, they've developed their own platforms. We have you from JC Deco. Uh, last week, we saw Talon launch Plato, their automatic, uh, automated trading platform, and Ada their data management platform. And of course, with Global's acquisition, that brings their DAX platform potentially into Global out of home. So again, it comes with a, with a platform already. And hopefully these platforms will really start to do a more seamless integration and acceptance of out of home into that AMP uh, automation and uh, program programmatic buy. However, in my view, as I said, I wasn't at yesterday's conference, um, we really do need to have more clarity over language. There's still quite a lot of confusion when people talk about RTB. Um, the current offering, I believe, is very much still about real-time buying in a guaranteed marketplace, um, not necessarily real-time bidding. I know it's coming, and I know some markets are really exploring that, but I think that can be confused. Um, and that misunderstanding can really cloud the issue moving forward. So my view is to have a, an agreed language. There are some really good campaigns which are being brought through automation, but fewer campaigns, I believe, through programmatic, though Holland and Germany have really started to move that forward. Um, but it takes time for new process, processes to be adopted and become the norm. So um, from both buyers and sellers. Looking at uh, digital out of home in total, when I look, we looked at um, global of where that's going to be, by 2021, it's forecasted that 24% of revenues in digital, um, which is quite interesting when you look at the overall share. What you're getting is inventory has more or less leveled off, but it's whether that swap between classic and digital. In the UK, we're already at 50%. So at the end of 2018, the revenues in digital were 50% of our total out-of-home revenues. So that, that is starting to move, but that's a global projection. Um, across Europe, total programmatic share, here we go. This is looking at programmatic. Total programmatic share uh, of uh, digital advertising is forecasted to reach 93% by 2023. So that's the IAB, that's their latest report and their expectation. So out of home, that collaboration to be out of home is an accepted part of that conversation. We really need to be part of that. Zenith's forecast, I don't know if anybody saw this, Zenith Optimedia forecast, 67% 67 of global digital display will be sold programmatically by the end of this year. Um, and in Europe, how that falls is that UK, it will fall UK, Denmark, France, 77, 70, and 63% of their digital display to be bought programmatically. So uh, that's really key. 
And the key ingredient in all of this is about the data and the data source and the clarity of data and third party data, first party data, and really understanding where that data comes from, where its manipulation has been. So location based data, the ability to target for targeting and retargeting are very much the tools of our age. We've seen uh, Talon and more recently JC Deco partner with Location Sciences um, to layer into their existing uh, data sets. Something that's already really close to my heart as well is digital creative. I run quite a few uh, digital creative workshops. Um, and we're still lagging behind with the, what the networks can do on what the creative world know we can do. So there's a massive uh, education piece that needs to go on. And I feel really quite saddened when I see a fantastic digital screen with something that's either a press ad that's just been put on it without any movement and that consideration has never joined forces. And the real key there is appreciating different markets, whether they can do full motion, non-full motion, whatever they can do. And campaigns could be late or it's signed off late or, or it's a, a response to something. But the, the lack of understanding of what networks can do is the one thing that we can really address. And how we address that is to ensure that no media plan is put together, no cross is put on a schedule without creatives being involved and creatives don't start creating assets without understanding media. And how, what's the visual lead in? What's the location? What's the environment? So that's something that collectively we can change. And it's very close to my heart is bridging that gap between media planning and creative. Uh, it's not just a digital conversation, it's also a classic as well, but um, it, it is something we, we can do something about. So, before we flip off, I'm, there's one more uh, execution of showing some great stuff across Europe that I want to show you. So just to wrap up, my takeaways. <laughs> you like that? Great. Does it look lazy? Um, <laughs> um, out of, I, for me, I know we talk about the future of out of home, but I think we're starting to live the future of out of home. I think we've seen such a resurgence of it. It's a really exciting time to be in it. Um, but we absolutely must capitalize on that. The opportunities of working across all the different markets and helping build that infrastructure is absolutely key. Across Europe, the gap is closing where markets are cleaning up and embracing digital at all different levels, and we need to be part of that. A standardization of audience measurement, of reporting, needs to be adopted quite speedily, because that will really elevate out of home in emerging markets. Mergers and acquisitions will continue to accelerate the whole trading and data platforms. Where there are duopolies, there is a reluctance to invest, which means there's an opening for more progressive and uh, obstructive players to snatch a slice of that cake. 
out of home must adopt and is adopting the new technologies that are the tools of our age now. Um, and that will drive a greater share. And the stake, stakeholders in those conversations, they really have to collaborate. They just, it's crazy, they've got to. Um, and out of home, uh, the creative side, we really do need to work across media to bring that to a fore. Um, and a conference I was at a week ago, I know my time is up, says it there. Uh, this just encapsulated everything. This was Tim Delaney, and he said, nothing can do what out of home can do, which was absolutely, is it, and that's what we need to embrace. And just before I go, I don't know if any of you are Game of Thrones people. You're a Game of Thrones man, aren't you? I liked this, so it Dragons hasn't and, got... Dragons and incest, what more do you want? Okay, I haven't seen it, but I thought advertising, digital out of home, AR, Game of Thrones, this was quite fun to finish on. <laughs>